Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Had a huge win for the Orioles last night. That was really exciting game to watch. Um, 7 nothing win for the Birds. Dean Kramer looked fantastic on the mound. Uh, another quality start for him. You know, he's just going to come out there, be a bulldog, fight every at bat. He's not going to walk many guys. He's going to just attack with the stuff that he has. He might not have the overpowering stuff of Gray Rod and Bradish. But hey, if you're going to come out there, you're going to throw strikes. You're going to put it in a good spot. Um, that's all you can ask for out of a pitcher. Uh, right now, in my opinion, the starting pitching rotation in the playoffs, I would put Dean ahead of Grayrod. Just because Grayrod's so young. Uh, Grayrod obviously has the stuff. He could be dominating in a playoff series. But I would go Bradish, Dean, Grayrod for the first three. Now, then four and five, your guess is as good as mine. Um... I personally favor a four-man rotation in the playoffs just because of, like, days off and stuff like that. Uh, you can get your four best. Uh, you know, the Orioles probably won't do that. I don't know. Um, like I said, your guess is as good as mine when it comes to how they're going to play that when the postseason comes. But it ought to be really interesting to see what they do, who they carry onto their postseason roster. Um, I'm hoping for what I just said. Maybe maybe Cole Irvin in that last spot. Uh, hopefully John Means is healthy, uh, and John Means can go maybe five innings, and then you can bring out a guy like Tyler Wells to pitch six and seven. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Maybe Tyler Wells uses an opener for innings one and two, and then you bring out Means. I mean, I don't know. It, it ought to be really cool to see what they do with all these starting pitchers they have. Jack Flaherty seems like a head case to me at this point, um, missing starts and whatnot. He's not there. He wasn't He wasn't ready after his last start. Look, man, that's bullshit. I don't want to hear that. Um, the Orioles just traded for you. You're supposed to come here and add to a postseason push. If you're not going to do that, there's the door. That's what I would be saying. I mean, I would cut the losses with him. I know that that sounds stupid, like they gave up three guys for him, but I don't want a guy who's going to come out and walk five people not get through five innings. Um, I mean, six innings is a quality start, but he struggled to get through five versus Houston. And then in his next start after that, I mean, he, he just got embarrassed. So I I don't I don't want to see him in the postseason. Um, Kyle Gibson has at least had some solid starts for the Orioles so far this season. Um, he's He's been struggling a little bit here recently, but hopefully tonight in his start, he gets back on track. Um, He's been a good vet for the Orioles this year. Uh, good presence in the clubhouse. And he has had some really good games. He's had a couple good games against the Blue Jays. So I'm hoping maybe he comes out tonight, bounces back. Um, he had a he had a cold stretch in, like, I want to say July, late June, July, like maybe right before the All-Star break. And he bust out of that and had a couple really good starts in a row. And now he's kind of kind of petering off again. But I'm hoping to see him come back strong tonight against the Blue Jays. He'll be facing Jose Barrios, who's like 10-0 and with a 2.66 ERA in his career against the Orioles. So, I don't know. I feel like the Orioles got to be due to beat him. I mean, the guy's a really good pitcher. Uh, he he has incredible success against the Orioles. Um, reminds me of John Lester back in the day. I'm just a dominating one team because John Lester used to dominate the Orioles in like every start that he pitched against them. Um, but the, the Orioles did eventually break that and get a win against them. I think he's won like seven consecutive decisions at Camden Yards. So it's it's time for the Orioles to knock him off, win this series against the Blue Jays, really put the nail in their coffin. Uh, you know, they came into Baltimore pretty far back in the division chase. Uh, they're, they're falling out of the wild card race a little bit um, with Seattle turning it on so hard. So they come to Baltimore in desperate need of some wins. And if the Orioles took two out of three from them, they're further behind than when they got here. I feel like that's the goal. You gotta, you gotta take it to the Blue Jays while you can. Um, I'm hoping to see Gibson go off tonight and pitch a really, really good game. Um, hopefully, Tony. I mean, Tony came back from his back strain, whatever he was going through. I know he had a sore back. Two home runs last night, so apparently the back is fine. Um, that's that's good. I'm glad he didn't have to stand on the injured list. I'd love to see him continue that tonight. I don't expect two home runs back to back games. But maybe go yard again once tonight. I mean, a couple doubles, maybe something like that. Uh, just get on base. You know, we need our big bats in the lineup. And Anthony Potatoes, man, Tony Taters, he has been money for the Orioles this season. Um, I think 
he has the sweetest swing on the entire team. And that's saying something, because we got guys like Gunnar Henderson and stuff. But the way Tony does it, it just looks effortless, man. The way he, those balls were about that high off the ground last night. Oh, I got my book falling out of my lap and stuff. But those, those pitches that he hit out, they were almost identical. And they were about, you know, eight, ten inches off the plate. I mean, and he just reached down and got him and flipped it out over the right field wall with the wrists. I mean, it just looked effortless. Um, he's got a boomstick whenever he's on, man. And it looks like he's on. He's ready to play some ball. So I am so happy he's back in the lineup. Um, Gunnar Henderson, a couple... Oh, I know he had at least one really good hit last night. I drove one down the line. Um, the dude is a machine. He's just a hustle machine. Um, he's been hitting the ball here recently. It seems to me like he's a lock to win Rookie of the Year. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, a lot of guys right now are playing really good ball. Westberg is playing really good ball right now. Ramon Urias had an insane play in the field last night. Um, the Orioles have a really good defense. I mean, a lot of the pitching right now seems to be, you know, coming around. CNL is coming around out in the bullpen. Um, uh, Mike Bauman just got optioned, but they called up Austin Voth, um, back from his injury. He was coming back from a 60-day stint on the injured list. So, I mean, having him back, maybe, you know, it pitches well because his elbow is not hurting him. Um, he pitched all right for the Orioles last year. And I know I've been critical on him this year, like I said yesterday. But hopefully, you know, maybe he can come make an impact for him. Jacob Webb has been absolutely lights out for the Orioles. It's a, we absolutely stole him from the Angels. Uh, I, they're idiots for cutting him. I know he had, like, three bad outings in a row for the Angels before he got DFA'd. But, man, he's come here and he's been money. Uh, Cano seems like he's back in his form. Bautista is just, the, you know, he's Bautista-ing. Um, he's, for lack of better words, uh, he's the mountain. He's going to come out. He's going to dominate. Um, I know I'm forgetting some. Oh, Nick Vespi got option back to AAA today, which is sad for me because I love Nick Vespi, but Danny Coulomb is back. So, you know, Danny Coulomb, not my favorite, honestly. I know a lot of Orioles fans think he's trustworthy. I don't have complete trust in him, but... You know, hopefully he comes and matches up well against some lefties. Uh, he throws a pretty mean hook, and if he can fool you, he'll get you. But ever since that game, I think it was May 6th, uh, I was at Truist Park in Atlanta. Uh, Kevin Pillar, who I hate from the bottom of my heart as a baseball player, um, <laughs> just from being on the Blue Jays and everything, comes on as a pinch hitter. Danny Coulomb is out there pitching. Uh, I wanted to see Cano pitch, but because I hadn't seen him pitch in person yet up to that point. But Cano was on some rest or whatever that day. Uh, he just pitched two games in a row before that or something like that. And um, Coulomb came out, I think it was the eighth inning, gave up an absolute piss missile into the second deck over my head in left field. So ever since that moment, I felt like, man, I, I can't trust this guy out here giving up home runs to Kevin Pillar's corpse. But... You know, maybe maybe he can uh, pitch well here down the stretch. Um, I hope so, anyways. Um, like I said, it's going to be tough tonight versus Barrios, but I feel like, you know, the Orioles, they just have a grit about them this season. And they're going to come out, and they're going to play a tough game. Like, they might lose because this dude does own the Orioles in his career, but they're not going to make it easy for Toronto. So, you know, hopefully they get the win here. Um, I was sad to see yesterday Shohei Otani towards UCL. Uh, he's not going to be pitching anymore this season. It really sucks. Um, I, I guess they're going to let him keep hitting. Uh, I don't know what their plans are. Uh, it seems like from like the language of everything I've been reading that he's going to stay in the lineup. Uh, he could still win MVP with a pretty serious injury. Um, it sucks, man. It, it sucks to see a player that good get hurt. I bet the Angels wish they traded him at this point because he's not going to re-sign there. I mean, they've been absolutely abysmal since the All-Star break, it seems like. Ever since the trade deadline, um, they went out and bought, you know, Giolito, Krohn, uh, Gritchick, and, you know, they lost, what, like seven games in a row, like, immediately. So, I just, I feel really bad for him. He deserves better. Um, I hope he goes somewhere where he can, where he can win. Um, it just sucks. It sucks to see. Uh, it sucked when Acuna got hurt a couple of years ago. I mean, these, you know, young, bright faces of baseball that are just so good, so much fun to watch. Um, it sucks to see him get hurt. So, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I feel bad for Shohei Otani. Uh, Mike Trout's also back on the injured list after, like, what, a game or something? So, that also sucks. I mean, he's a legend of the game, and he can just never stay healthy, man. I mean, it, it sucks to say, but he misses, what, like, at least two months every season, it seems like. And he's still usually in the MVP race. That's how good he is. So, it's just, it's disappointing. It's really disappointing to see. <sighs> I guess that's all I really have for today. Um, I said my piece on the Orioles game last night, and... What I think about tonight and everything, uh, I'm sure there's some news that could be talked about, but it is what it is, man. That's all I got for today. Um, I'm looking forward to the game tonight. Hopefully Kyle Gibson can bear down and, uh, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jose Barrios. Um, thanks for watching. You know, I always appreciate everybody that watches these, uh, everyone that likes the videos and comments and stuff. I love talking to you all in the comments, talking about the birds and you know, whatever else I might be talking about that day. Um, if you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe. And, uh, you know, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, we will talk about the game tonight, and we'll look at that Rocky series for the weekend. I'll be going to the game on Saturday, so I'm looking forward to that one. I haven't seen them play the Rockies and <sighs> since Larry Walker and Todd Helton were on the team, and I was, like, a little kid. So it'll be cool. Um, it's, it's been a long time since I've seen that team. <laughs> um I hope you all have a great rest of your day and a really good evening, and uh, hopefully we get to see the Orioles win tonight. Peace out.